Hey guys, sorry about the background noise, but it's uh, getting quite warm and humid here in Chicago, so I've got the AC going. Now, I read all your comments about the Philco 90, and I know a lot of you would like me to at least try to power up the chassis that came with it, and I will. However, it's a valuable set, and that chassis, I just really don't like some of those changes, which are mainly to the power supply and the audio output. Like for example, they removed the filter choke and just replaced it with one big capacitor. Which makes me think that um, something may have happened to the set. Like a filter uh, capacitor shorted out and burned out the power choke and maybe the biased power resistor. Because the components that were removed seemed unusual. If you were just trying to improve performance, why would you remove the filter choke from the power supply? why would you remove the bias resistor? So, what I'm getting at is I was offered an unmolested Philco 90 chassis with a single one at 47 output and I went ahead and got it. And there should also be the one knob that I'm missing, the small knob for the power switch. Just arrived, double boxed, uh, so I'll grab a knife and open up this inner box, and uh, let's see what uh, condition it's really in. The Philco 90 is more valuable than most radios in my collection. Certainly more valuable than, say, the 3862 or the... 623 or the 643, those are the farm uh, tombstone sets. Give you some idea. One in all original, unrestored, unmolested condition sold on eBay the other night for about 340 bucks plus shipping. And I've seen them go as high as over 800 a few uh, months ago. Unrestored, all original. Once you start getting into modifications and holes cut in the speaker grill for eye tubes and stuff, it really has an impact on the value. Not that I'm all about value when it comes to collecting radios, but it helps. <laughs> so here's what I've got. Now the, the seller had sent me photos, so I, I pretty well knew what the condition was going to be like. Now I may very well swap parts between the chassis. so. In my mind, my end game, what's most likely to happen is, sure, I may try to, you know, do a quick recap and power up the other chassis, but in the end, I will cherry pick parts from both to make one good, solid working chassis, and I will sell off whatever parts are left over to try to recoup some of my investment into restoring this set. For example, I now have two of these tube shields. And the other one I've got is in very good condition, a very nice label on the side. So I probably will keep that one. Um, we'll see what condition this one's in. All right, so anyways, from the top, we can see that a little dirty, but uh, not much rust. A little down in here. So the other chassis may be in a better uh, condition, aside from, of course, all the tube sockets being repaired. And you can see he did include that one little knob that I needed. I think this does have the original controls. And I noticed on the other chassis, after I did the video, I took some photos of the band switch on that. Um, was completely replaced. I had noted that the shaft was different and, and the original knob wouldn't fit onto it. Turns out the entire switch behind it was a modern rotary wafer switch. It wasn't, or a modern-ish. <laughs> it wasn't the original type that had a, a, a box filled with tar with several capacitors embedded inside of it. So I didn't get any tubes with this radio, but I knew that uh, beforehand. And it's got at least one, I believe, original capacitor or similar. Now, I've seen some of the original versions of this and they have copper Mershon caps, but they made this chassis for a while and with uh, three revisions at least. So I'm not sure they all came with those copper caps. Sure, it'd be really sweet to get one of those or get some of those caps, but um, 
that was kind of the very first type of electrolytic and they didn't last that long so it's very common for them to have been replaced. And they probably only used them in the earliest version which had the push-pull 45 output. Which in some regards is more valuable because it's the earlier version but also keep in mind that the early version didn't have AVC. So in later versions they swapped out the dual 45's for a single 47 but uh, they, uh, that extra socket that got freed up, they put a 27 in there and they give you AVC. AVC being automatic volume control, meaning your, air, your ears didn't get uh, blasted as you tuned from a weak station to a strong station. That was just the uh, old antenna that I pulled out of there. Alright, enough jabbering. I will uh, put down the camera and pull this chassis out. Let's take a look underneath. I should gloss over the fact that it arrived intact. That's what you get from a seller who knows how to pack something. Double boxed, no damage. Alright, so it turns out the label is in pretty good shape on this one as well. A little scuff on the side there, so I'll have to compare the two, see which one is better. Reproductions are available out there. Um, and for sure, whichever one of mine is in better condition, I will scan this. It's very easy to take this off and put on a flatbed scanner. Make a nice high-res scan of that. In case anybody needs a reproduction. And here's underneath. And just as the seller had promised, it's pretty darn near all original. Probably a few repairs like this. Which is common back in the day where they would replace a bad cap inside of a Bakelite block by just tacking one externally in parallel with the one inside, which is a bad idea because if the one inside shorts out, it's, uh, no good. But anyway, so here, um, I wish I could tell you, the other one is, is inside the cabinet and up on a shelf right now, otherwise I'd like to get them side by side, and maybe in a later video I will. But refer back to the earlier video or maybe I'll just insert a photo of it right here so that should give you some idea of how much has changed <laughs> between this one and the old one so um, in the other chassis this is gone this is gone this is gone this is gone and several of these Bakelite blocks are gone and there's a new transformer mounted down in here. So this is the filter choke I was talking about that's missing in the other set. And these two boxes each have several capacitors inside of them. As do all of these Bakelite blocks down here. So in terms of like this up, I think both chassis are identical for the front end, the RF amp, the local oscillator, the mixer, and the IF, identical. The only thing that's changed between the two is the power supply, the detector, and the audio amp. That's why I'm not so sure about how much performance difference there may be between the two. Um, anyway, so here's the original band switch. So I was talking about in the other chassis, it's a, just a plain old four position or three position rotary switch, whereas this is the original type. Like I've shown you in my Philco 60s, very similar. There's a tub here with several capacitors embedded in a block of tar, and then a crude type of rotary switch for a multi position tone control. Let's see. Power switch feels real nice. And volume control it sure looks like a replacement. And a rather exposed one at that. But it's replaced in the other set too. Most, if not all, the fill because I have the volume control has been replaced. Uh, most commonly used control after tuning, I suppose, and they just wear out. So what are you going to do? But this is certainly um, far more original and very restorable. You know, I can restuff these boxes and I can restuff the Bakelite blocks. Get all the nice, colorful, original uh, dog bone resistors. And here's the big old multi-tap bias resistor. Oh, you can see that cap is spewed its insides, which would be this, which sure looks like it's an original, or at least a very early type. Got a bit of a dent in it too, oh well. 
14 microfarad. No, that's that's a replacement. I'm pretty sure, although it is a Philco. The original had, I think, a six microfarad on either side of this filter choke. So not not a 14, but I'll have to double check on that. Oh, I can see there are multiple wires coming out. So, is that a multi-suction cap. Oops. I just see. If 14 microfarads stamped on it. Oh, you know what that probably is? <laughs> it's hard to tell with all the corrosion on it, but I think it's just one terminal and there's multiple wires going to, and that is just a single section cap, so no mystery there. Alright, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick look while I check this out for the very first time because the seller asked me to give him some feedback when I received it and I want to let him know that it arrived intact in good condition. And finally here it is with all the correct knobs installed. So this is Tone. Power and volume and of course tuning and the tuning action on this is quite nice original dial scale is dirty but I think is alright so as always don't know when I'll get to it but I think this will be a very interesting restoration project hope you enjoyed this quick look at my new Philco 90 chassis